My name is Angie Cross. I'm 57 years old, young, and um, I've always been active all my life. I started off riding a bike when I was very young. Um, I used to ride to my granddad's shop on a push bike and help him in the shop and collect things for him and ride back. Um, and then later on in my life, I started running. So I used to run half marathons, Newcastle half marathon, round Leyland, I've done half marathons, Liverpool, Preston. So I used to love my running. Um, and then I started walking up mountains. I've probably walked, I'd say, 80% of all the mountains in the Lake District. I've done Snowdonia various times, um, been up to Scotland, done some Monroes. I've walked in the Shetland Islands. So I've walked all over the UK, basically. I started skiing quite late in my life, and now I just love skiing. So we do probably, I don't know, two or three weeks a year, if possible, skiing all around the mountains in, in France, near Chamonix. I also go sailing, so again, I started quite late, probably in my 40s, started sailing and raced at Liverpool Yacht Club for at least 10 years. I love sailing in the Ionian, in Greece. Yeah, I just love being out on the water. It's just natural to be powered by the wind rather than a, a motor or an engine. We go to Sinchevela Ben virtually every Christmas if we can. We were there for about eight days. Came home uh, absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. Went to work on the 2nd of January and my left leg from the knee down was cold, completely cold. And I thought, oh, I'll warm it up, I'll sit by a radiator. So I sat by a radiator, I couldn't get my leg warm at all. I just thought, that's a bit strange. Why is my leg so cold? Didn't really think anything of it. About one o'clock on the Saturday morning, I was in agony. My, pe my leg was so painful. Um, my foot had gone white. And I just thought, oh, what's wrong with my leg? And my partner was saying, we'll take you to A&E. I said, no, I'm not going to A&E. It's not, it's not an emergency. You know, I'll be okay. The next day he said, no, I'm taking you to somewhere. We Googled what um, walking centres were open and we found one in Blackpool that was open. So we actually drove to Blackpool. Didn't really want to make a force, pretended that we were out for the day and I'd got this pain in my leg. Um, walked in, the doctor saw us and uh, examined me. And then he said, I need to make a phone call. So we went off, made a phone call and came back and said, oh, well, I want you to make an appointment, an urgent re appointment to see a consultant, a vascular consultant next week. So then I went to Royal Preston Hospital, saw the vascular consultant. He actually thought I had Raynaud's disease. He said, you've got pain in that leg. He said, but it might go into the second leg as well. I was like, crikey, I can't walk. I thought, how's this happened overnight from being physically fit, walking up mountains, skiing, to not being able to walk around the supermarket? So I thought, right, OK. So he said, I'll make you an appointment to have um, a duplex ultrasound scan. And um, I thought, OK, well, do you not need to do that now? Do you not need to have a look at my leg now? But he said, no, you know, your appointment will come in the post. So because I've worked in the NHS, I thought, right, OK, I'll ring the secretary. She said, look, she said, there's nothing I can do. You're going to have to see if you can get um, a cancellation. So I rang the radiography department and said, is there any chance of a cancellation? So they said, oh, just, yeah, we've got a cancellation a week on Friday. So I said, right, I'll have it. She said, well, what time? I said, I don't care, I'll just come... And then on the Friday, when I went for the scan, um, the sonographer kept rooting around my leg, knee for about half an hour. And she kept saying, oh, I, I need to go and speak to someone. I said, oh, right, OK. So off she went. Half an hour later, she came back. She said, um, I believe you've got an appointment next Wednesday to see the consultant. Because uh, I'd already been back to my doctor and said, look, I'm not happy with this. And she said, well, just keep that appointment and you know, we'll see you next Wednesday. I said, right, I said, I can't wait. 
I said, I'm going to go to AD on Sunday morning at six o'clock when they're quiet, in inverted commas. <laughs> so off we go, roll pressed in A&E, Sunday morning thinking, oh, they'll just give me a few tablets or something. And then the next minute, I'm, you know, everyone starts talking to you in a different manner. I thought so, something's quite wrong here. Um, then they sent me to the medical assessment unit and they start putting the cannulas in your arm. And I was like, well, what's happening? They basically said that I had a popliteal aneurysm and then said, look, you, we're going to have to operate. So they admitted me on the Sunday. A few days later, I went down into theatres, but the ward that I was on was horrendous. It was horrendous. I think I was the only patient with two legs. Everyone else had had amputations. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm sat here, I'm going down to theatres tomorrow. Am I gonna, is it gonna work? Am I gonna have to have my leg off? It was just a horrendous, horrendous experience, very frightening. So I went down to theatres in the morning and I think I was down there a long time, I don't know. I don't even remember waking up in recovery. Um, I just woke up in the ward. And um, when, I came, when I came to, my leg was very, very swollen and I had big wound dressing right the way up the inside of my leg. Uh, I was glad to see that I had my leg. <laughs> because when you sign the consent form, one of the risks is amputation. So it was, that was uh, quite worrying. And they said I was very, very lucky. I was probably within hours of losing my leg. If I hadn't have gone in to hospital when I did. So, I'm glad I went in. I was discharged from hospital. So, well, you need to keep your leg elevated to try and reduce the swelling. And I was had some Zimmer frames for a while. Um, and then I just started walking around the house. And then as I got a little bit better, people would take me out for lunch, some of my friends. So then I'd walk around the cafe or something and, and just slowly building up my walking. And then I was managing to walk up to the shop and walk back. I couldn't drive for oh, a good three or four months or something like that. I ended up doing about three miles a day every morning, um, which was good, which probably helps, you know, it helps with the circulation. It's quite funny really, because my little grandson's nearly two and he can run quite fast and I can't actually catch him. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I could be able to run as fast as him so I can catch him so he doesn't run off. I'll definitely go back to sailing, definitely go back to skiing and walking. Yeah, all the activities, I'll go, I'll go back to them. Once I get the strength back in my leg, uh, I can walk, I can walk. I think the furthest I've walked so far is about seven miles, but that's on the flat, there's not up a mountain. I'm very, very grateful, I've, I've, I've got two legs. Very, very grateful. And there, there were stories in that hospital ward where people had left it too late. And unfortunately the choice was, we're either gonna have to amputate your leg or you're gonna die. That was their choice. The message that I'd like to give to everyone is look after your legs. You know, look after your legs, look after your feet, because they're really, really important.